All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick's on the Power. So yesterday we talked about Sergio Oliva and his comeback to the Olympia stage after a 12-year hiatus. Um, so his last Olympia was 1969, and he wouldn't come back until 1984, which is the longest hiatus of a Mr. Olympia winner to come back and enter the Mr. Olympia again. But he is not the only Mr. Olympia to take a long hiatus from bodybuilding and then return. So Larry Scott, a fellow 1960s bodybuilder and the first Mr. Olympia winner in 1965, and then he would defend his title in 1966, but then he would retire from bodybuilding at the age of 28 after that second Mr. Olympia win in 66, and he cited the reason of he wanted to focus on his marriage more than he wanted to focus on bodybuilding, and that's why he retired. Now, to be honest with you guys, Larry Scott is actually one of my personal favorite Mr. Olympia winners from the 1960s. I think he had some of the greatest arms of all time, especially for the 1960s, man. He had incredible bicep development, training at Vince Garanda's gym throughout the 60s. Now, during his training at Vince Garanda's gym, he actually played a very big part in popularizing the preacher curl, which at that time was actually called the Scott curl. He was known to be one of the first golden era bodybuilders to do this variation of the curl and he had obviously some of the best developed arms of the 1960s so being the first to do this exercise and obviously they worked he made them a very very popular exercise and that all started at vince garanda's gym now if you don't know who vince garanda is go see my video that i did on vince garanda he is one of the most famous gurus um, of the golden era in bodybuilding um, he owned the famous vince's gym and there's a lot of history there i think a lot of you guys would be interested in watching that video so Larry Scott was not that big of a guy. He weighed between 205 and 215 pounds on stage in competition condition or between 88.5 and 93 kilograms at a height of five foot seven or 170 centimeters. But in the 1960s, his arms measured a hefty 20 inches, which was a pretty big measurement for that period of time. Now, not only did Larry Scott win the first and second Mr. Olympias ever, he was also a two-time Mr. Universe, a Mr. America, and a Mr. California winner. So in that era, it's important to remember that Larry Scott was the man in the 1960s. So when he chose to retire at the age of 28, it was a very big deal in bodybuilding because 28, even by today's standards, is still a very, very young age. Arguably, he could have gone on to win many more Mr. Olympias in the 1960s. And people were just baffled by the fact that he wanted to retire from bodybuilding because he had such great genetics. He was very, very popular. And honestly, he was just a good face for the sport. So Larry Scott did, in fact, take a 13-year hiatus from the sport of bodybuilding. However, he would never return to the Olympia stage like Sergio Oliva did. He would come back in 1979 to compete at two shows, the Canada Diamond Pro Cup, where he would place ninth, and the 1979 Grand Prix Vancouver, where he did not even place. So neither of these shows were really even that big of pro shows to begin with. Um, and he placed outside of the top six. And then at the other show, he did not even place. So arguably um, one of the least successful comebacks in the history of bodybuilding and probably an embarrassing comeback for a former Mr. Olympia winner. But in 1979, Larry Scott was 41 years old. So he's no longer a young man. I think honestly, he still brought a pretty impressive physique to the stage, even though it wasn't the same physique we were used to seeing. His chest was obviously significantly smaller. I think his arm development was actually, you know, on par with, if not a little bit better than his arm development from those first two Olympias that he won. I think his arms were definitely on point when he made that comeback um, and very, very impressive for a 41 year old man that had taken a 13 year hiatus from bodybuilding. So even though in terms of placings, it was not that successful of a comeback, I still think it should still go down in history as one of the impressive comebacks throughout the history of bodybuilding for a guy to take off 13 years from the bodybuilding stage and come back with a physique that even remotely resembled the physique that he had before. So I still think it's impressive in that regard. So Larry Scott, one of the greatest of all time. Unfortunately, he is no longer with us. He passed away back in 2014 at the age of 75, and the cause of death was unfortunately Alzheimer's disease. So thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Nick Strangland Power, signing out.